सर कैन वी स्टार्ट ना यस वी सर स्टार्ट प्लीज स्टार्ट थैंक यू सर आई लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस 53rd एडिशन ऑफ थर्सडे म्यूजिंग्स वी हैव अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड वी हैव वन ऑफ द फॉरमोस्ट स्पीकर्स ऑफ इंडिया एंड इन द वर्ल्ड टू एड्रेस दिस थिंग uh kindly kindly keep keep yourself hooked on uh, the rules are simple uh, we have kept everyone on mute anyone who has to ask questions kindly post it in the chat box uh, myself and dr amrit will take the slide uh, pawan next slide yeah let me introduce the uh, chairperson of this program Tofan Pati sir, he is a professor uh, in psychiatry. He is from Katak, and since he does not like to waste time, sir, over to you directly, and please keep our uh, moderator CVs also. Okay, thank you, Alim. Thank you, Alim, for saving our time. Pavan, please proceed. So we are our moderators are Dr. Amrit Patjoshi and Dr. Alim Siddiqui, who absolutely don't need an introduction. One is with me. Bhubaneswar in High Tech Medical College. Dr. Alim Siddiqui is professor in Bhubaneswar in Eras Lucknow Medical College. Both are IPS CC members. One is continuing now. One has just retired. And with this, I would like to introduce our chairpersons, Dr. Sita Nilkanth Despande, who I know since long, long time. And he had been, she had been the for, former professor and head of the department of psychiatry abgms dr ramanur lia hospital in new delhi she is she has been involved in enormous research work she conducted fogarty international center nih usf 100 training program in research in introduction implementation and psychiatric genetics in 2004 and now here she is into the jobs in 2020 she Did systems research in 1988, then research in schizophrenia genetics since 1992. She led 36 plus research projects in autism, schizophrenia genetics, and sector of NIH, WHO, ICMR, DST, and DBT. And the list is quite unending. She participated in developing the Indian Scale of Assessment of Autism, which is known as ISSA, ISAA, and also the Indian Autism Screening Questionnaire. She is a member of developing ICMR Human Research Guidelines for Vulnerable Groups, 2007. She is on the editorial board of many international journals and she has been the vice chair of WPS WPS section on gen genetics. She is or had been in the task force of IPS in many capacities as chair of the women section, specific learning leaders as well as MHCA 2017. She is W trainer for tobacco cessation. With this. I present with you Dr. Smita Nilkanth Despande of Thai Brain Chapters. And next, please, my dear dear friend Dr. Madhavan PM, who may rank up after a long time. She is a senior consultant psychiatrist in Port Tapan, Palakkad. She has done his MD psychiatry from CIP Ranchi in 1983-86. She is an experienced doctor with the demonstrated history of working in the medical practice industry. She has he has. Strong healthcare services professional with more than 40 years of experience in the field of psychiatry is quite vibrant, quite as well. And I welcome Dr. P. M. Madhavan. With this, I hand over the meeting to our esteemed chairperson, Dr. Tesh Pandey and Dr. Madhavan. Your stage, please. Thank you, Dr. Madhavan. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. first of all congratulations to this excellent team and very consistent team it is no easy task to organize a, a meeting every thursday and on interesting topics extremely interesting thought provoking top, topics all throughout for more than 53 sessions so you have made actually our lockdown very very entertaining and interesting thank you very much for that and every time uh, you know digging up a, a, a good new topic is an extremely difficult task which this team has done very successfully uh, so thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this uh, big movement and i hope it will continue even after the uh, pandemic is over uh, before uh, you know going on on to a very long prolonged introduction about uh, dr mohandas which i think 
will be redundant because we all know him. He has been a sterling speaker throughout his long and illustrious career. But more than that, he was my senior at Ames. So I, I hope I have known him for an equally long time. He has been very, very distinguished in many, many institutions, uh, many uh, organizations, the World Psychiatry Association, the Indian Psychiatric Society, the Indian Association of Biological Psychiatry, and so many others. He has been a guiding light. So without much ado, Dr. Madhavan, if you permit, or would you like to say a few words and then we can uh, call Dr. Mohanda straight away to start his uh, enlightening uh, lecture for us. Please, ma'am, go ahead. So when, uh, when I heard the topic, uh, in fact, Dr. Siddiqui, Dr. Gopanpati, both of them, I was very, I protested a lot because I thought that was a very sexist topic and it was not appropriate in this age and day to be so very, um, you know, gender insensitive. But uh, Dr. Mohandas, he is such a sweet person that he rang up in the evening to clarify exactly what he was wanted to say and in what kind of a uh, scientific and yet uh, an interesting kind of way that he wanted to talk about, about uh, the differences between uh, the way men and women are wired. And I'd love to hear more on the topic from Dr. Mohandas. Please, sir, can you start? We are just waiting for you. Yeah, can you see the slide? Yeah, sure. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much. I'm grateful to Odisha straight branch, Tofan Pati, the boss, my friend, and the master, other masterminds, Alim Siddiqui, and my dear friend, uh, Amrit Smita, and after all, Madhavan, who is a friend since four decades plus. I was asked um, by Tofan Padi for a long time, Mondas, you have to speak something on Thursday musings. I thought, what is Thursday musings? What is Thursday special? The name Thursday is derived from Old English. Bundrast Dag and Middle English Thursday. Thursday, it is named after the Norse god of Thunder, Thor. Latin name for Thursday was Lovis Dies, meaning Jupiter's Day. Are you hearing me? Can you hear yes, me? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very clear. Yeah, yeah, loud and clear and you can see your beautiful slides. Buddhist Thailand, Thursday is considered to be teacher's day. I don't know whether I qualify myself as a teacher. Anyway, today is Thursday. In India, the word for Thursday is Guru Vara. You have to give the Vara from a Guru. I don't know whether I'm a Guru or a Shishya. Late 14th century, the musings had a word that is act of pondering, meditation, or thought. So I congratulate the organizers, Tofan, Alim, and Amrit for making it on Thursday and especially Thursday musings because you are pondering and it is the thought process, changing thought process. So I selected this topic, Menar from Mars, Women are from Venus, are their brains wired differently? The outline of presentation will be some funny quotes and curiosity of a psychiatrist about marriage, a snapshot of John Gray, American relationship counselor, then some inquiry into astronomic terms called Mars and Venus. What was the information we had earlier or was misinformed. What is the current information available till 2021 May? 
then the question is is there any gay brain then what resulted in psychiatrist curiosity but i won't be covering what and why of gender difference in disorders or diseases what is disorder disorder is a distorted order disease is a distorted ease and also i want to cover extensive molecular biology genetics or omics pharmacological response etc because thursday musing has to have a pondering over you have to reflect it not the hard stuffs you know pretty well god made man before woman to give him time to think of an answer for her first question madhavan i don't know whether he will agree with me god made man before woman to give him time to think of an answer for her first question i don't know what was the first question madhavan you can enlighten it now thinking of the background this is the back of a person this is the ground a uh, little bit funny types of graphics which i thought of it but what we are talking is science what is science science is simply the word we use to describe a method of organizing our curiosity so i will try to organize the curiosity of the psychiatrist but being a scientist is like doing a zigzag puzzle in a snowstorm at night with some pieces missing and with no idea what the finished picture looks like i don't know what will be the result anyway mr a psychiatrist is planning to get married and he would like to get opinion from experts about selection for a happy and married life this is his dream process dream process but falling in love why don't i love he is not at all the most stupid thing that people do but gravitation cannot be held responsible for it so you can fall in love because einstein will never talk about it it is a gravitation technique so what we usually do we really ask our google brother and he this gentleman read different quotable quotes naturally he got confused a good marriage would be between a blind wife and a deaf husband this is a gentleman michael de mundane has told whether you agree or not i will not um, argue but it is almost like a public toilet those waiting outside are desperate to get in and those inside are desperate to come out as somebody has talked about it it is not my story madhavan please pardon me being a good husband is like being a stand up comic you need 10 years before you can call yourself a beginner i don't know the experience of the audience always you usually say oh god all marriages are happy all marriages are happy it is a living together afterward cause all the trouble what counts in making a happy marriage is not so much how compatible you are but how you deal with incompatibility there's a funny aspect of it what is incompatibility no income and no patability some people say but uh, up to you to stretch your imagination anyway it is a thought process pondering no income no patability but anyway he discussed with a psychologist with so many pictures in his gallery and what did he say suppose you are a psychotimic and you are marrying a paranoid lady it will be a battle ground that i can assure but if you are a narcissistic person you are marrying a borderline personality disorder or emotionally unstable a girl 
then it will be a theatrical experience. And uh, who will be the best actor or actress? I don't know. Schiz Suppose you are a schizotypal and marrying a passive aggressive personality, it is made for each other because one will not respond much. What about your personality? That's a gamble. This is the gamble. He discussed and he got so much confused with a veteran. Veteran is this gentleman. He has told, admit your wife is always right, although she is wrong. That you have to keep in mind. Remember marriage anniversary and her birthday. How will you remember it? Madhavan knows it very well. Better to put in the toilet eh, the dates. At least sometimes you will remember the dates. Otherwise, you might forget it. Uh, sorry, it is a funny aspect of the game. <clears throat> A great marriage is not when the perfect couple comes together. It is when an imperfect couple learns to enjoy their differences. And he told, why don't you read John Gray's book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. So what about uh, who is John Gray? A snapshot. He's an American relationship counselor. He told, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. John Gray is an American relationship counselor, born in Houston, Texas in 51. His father was an oil executive, mother worked at a spiritual bookshop, attended the universities of St. Thomas and Texas. He lives in North Carolina with his wife, Bonnie, three daughters, three grandchildren. Graduated with a bachelor's, master's degree in science of creative intelligence. Attended transcendental lecture in 69. Devoted nine years to yogi, Maharishi Mahesh, Mahesh Yogi, becoming his personal assistant. In 82, in Columbia Pacific University, awarded him a PhD degree. In 92, he wrote this book, Men Are From Mars, webinar from Venus, it was published. Selling more than 7 million copies worldwide, translated to 40 languages. 97, he started the Mars and Venus Counseling Centers. Smart Marriage Impact Award, he got it in 2001. And honorary doctorate from Governor State in Illinois in 2002. These are, he authored 17 books, Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, Mars and Venus on a date, why Mars and Venus collide, Mars and Venus together forever, Mars and Venus in touch, Venus on fire on Mars ice, Mars and Venus diet and x-ray solution, and starting over, ma ma Mars and Venus in the bedroom, and Mars and Venus in the workplace. Now, it doesn't matter all this thing. There are two times when a man doesn't understand a woman. One is before marriage and later after marriage. Only two times you get upset. So he, this gentleman, psychiatrist, heard of Mars, Venus. What about inquiry into astronomic terms? What about Mars? This is... Mars and Venus. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun, named after the Roman god of war, often described as a red planet due to its reddish appearance. It is called the fire star. Second smallest planet in the solar system, Mars has the largest dust zone in solar system, not in the mindset. Mars is home to the tallest mountain in the solar system, the Olympus Mons. A year in Mars is almost two years on Earth. Only 18 missions to Mars have been successful. Indian Space Research Organization, Mangalyan Orbiter, arrived on September 28, 24th, on 2014. What about Venus? It's the second planet from the sun and the second brightest object in the night sky after the moon. 
named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. The surface of the planet is obscured by an opaque layer of clouds made up of sulfuric acid. Be careful. Venus rotates not clockwise, counterclockwise. Atmospheric pressure on Venus is 92 times greater than Earth. Pressure is so much. And I don't know. The volatility, impulsivity is because of the Venus. I don't know. Also known as a morning star and evening star. It is bi almost like a bipolar. Morning star and evening star. The hottest planet in our solar system. Uh, you have to test it. 462 degrees centigrade. Mr. A wanted to explore the brain, any brain difference between man and woman. And in the Google, you will see a female brain with the babies, talk, respect, love, security, shoes, or even cosmetics. In male, sex, food, sex, TV, beer, football, sex, cricket, etc., etc. But what was the information so far we had, scientific information? Was it correct information or a misinformation? We will see. Cognitive abilities, male with females, do not differ in overall intelligence. Males better in special and some mathematical skills, problem solving skills. This was the available literature. Reading, comprehension, verbal fluency, and phonological processing, there's a female advantage. They are better. Memory for special location, language learning, recognition memory, especially better verbal memory, better episodic memory is female better. Larger inner chemistry commission, fiber bundles, Splenium and anterior commission, larger hippocampus, larger chordate nucleus. Mirror neuron system is larger, especially when it read it, inferior frontal gyrus, larger insular cortex, and larger limbic cortices. Greater cortical thickness and greater complexity of convolutions particularly in the frontal and parietal lobes. Increased gray matter volume in women's left hemisphere and auditory and language related regions. Women engage more the right inferior frontal gyrus. That's why we talked about the mirror neuron system, uh, the Salotis experiment in inferior frontal gyrus at the initial. I will not go to give a talk on mirror neuron system. Women engage more right frontal parietal hippocampal regions than men in special navigation. Emotional memory task. Amygdala is activated in both sex, but activation is greater the left amygdala in women and right amygdala in men. But to women, love is an occupation. To men, it is a preoccupation. What about males? Brain volume 10% larger in males, larger occipital and frontal parts of men compared to women. What of the four interstitial nuclei of the anterior hypothalamus is larger in women. Earlier, the postmortem reports, they usually say we can differentiate male, female brain uh, because of this thing. But um, that anterior hypothalamus, that's all in 90s. That's all gone, gone are the days. Some regions of the bed nucleus of stria terminalis, central portion of the connection between hypothalamus and amygdala, they are larger in men. Men appear to have larger regions of the parietal lobe, primary brain area and special ability. And during special navigation, men were seen to engage more left temporal regions than women. <clears throat> Brain activation during emotion recognition task. Men have greater bilateral activity than women in limbic areas. 
including amygdala and prefrontal regions. Men to tend to sit more along the systemizing end of the spectrum, but women at the empathizing end, though there are plenty of exceptions. Females showed stronger neural activation, emotional related areas, including the amygdala, that is especially gender different, stronger amygdala activation females during their follicular phase. Males activate more cortical, rather cognitive related areas, but similar activation in frontotemporal occipital regions and brainstem in females. Male brains are optimized for intrahemispheric, only one within the hemisphere, but female brains are interhemispheric communication. Male brains are structured to facilitate connectivity between perception coordinated action, whereas the female brains are designed to facilitate communication between analytical and intuitive processing modes. Anyway, a woman has the last word in any argument. Anything a man says after that is the beginning of a new argument. Ali might be interested in this thing. But this was the information we had. But what is the current information available up to 2021? As you pretty well know, brain is plastic and the sex differences likely emerge from the interplay of genes, sex hormones, and social experience. Social experience play a big role, also sex hormone and genes. So somebody might be asking what about uh, LGBT, sexual orientation, et cetera. Basically, it is the interplay of all these things. I will come to that later. There's a term called neurosexism. That is a bias in the neuroscience of sex difference towards reinforcing harmful gender stereotype. This term was coined by Cordelia Fine in 2008, popularized in 2010, and she has written Delusions of Gender. Now, sex beyond the genitalia, that is a human brain mosaic. This lady, Daphna Joel from Israel, she has told, we should shift from thinking of brains as falling into two classes, one typical of males and the other typical of females appreciating the variability of human brain mosaic. Although there are sex gender difference in brain structure, brains do not fall into two class, one typical of males and the other typical of females, nor are they aligned along a male brain, female brain. There is no difference according to her. Now, Lara Varanga studied 1,234 children and young adults, aged between 3 and 21, from a large MRI database in University of California. She compared the variation in brain volume in men and in women, especially she, uh, this has come in uh, 2017. Men have only one chromosome, one X chromosome, if this chromosome contains a gene that is related to smaller brain structure, you will therefore see this in all brain structures in men. Women, a true X chromosome with a tendency towards the average. As a different X chromosome is active in one brain cell than other, the extremes balance each other out. The typical male psychiatric disorders may be linked to great variation brain volume in men and single X chromosome. This may provide new insight into ADHD and autism, according to Varenka. But a sexual orientation, neurocognitive ability, a meta in men and women 
Matthias reveal that homosexual men perform like heterosexual women in both male favoring and female favoring cognitive tests, while homosexual women perform like heterosexual men only in male favoring tests. I will come to that later. It is a meta-analysis you can read from neuroscience and biobehavior reviews. In the UK biobank study, a young researcher, is, uh, that is called Stuart Ritchie, published in Cerebral Cortex in 2018, August, and his colleagues examined volumes of 68 brain regions and thickness of the cerebral cortex, thought to be important in consciousness, language, memory, perception, and other functions. According to him and his colleagues, women tend to have significantly thicker cortices than men. That has been associated with the high scores on a variety of cognitive or generalized general intelligence tests. Men had higher brain volumes than men in every subcortical region they looked at, including hippocampus. Uh, very controversial thing. So females have got more cortical thicknesses according to them. Analysis of human brain structure reveals that brain types typical of males are also typical of females and vice versa. You can go through this article in Frontiers in Human Neurosciences 2018, whether one is female or male, is not a major predictor of variability of human brain structure. The brain types typical of females are also typical of males and vice versa. Large sex differences are found only in the prevalence of some rare brain types, very, very rare. So the question is, is the brain in males and females, is, the, is there a dimorphism or are we talking monomorphism? A gender world will produce a gendered brain. Differences are not seen between small-headed men and large-headed women. This is Lizzie Elliot. She is uh, very good. Her bad science and unisex brain, which has come in nature. Brain evidence from deep learning. This is a 2019 article with the uh, the conductum uh, era now. They have seen that there are subtle differences in certain places. One minute. Especially high classification include left precuneus, left postcentral gyrus, left cingulate gyrus, right orbital frontal gyrus, and left occipital thalamus gametar and middle cell drum pitangle. They do of corpus callosum. I mean, they have seen some differences, but unfortunately, they say they cannot link these type of things to a behavioral characteristics. Or uh, so it is too early to talk about it. There is a new article which has come in Proceedings National Academy of USA, 2020 August, Integrative Structural Functional Transcriptomic Analysis of Sex Bias Brain Organization Humane, uh, in Humans. You can read it. Now, this is a new article which has come, Neuroscience and Biobehavior Reviews, 2021. I don't know whether it has come out now. Dumb the Dimorphism, a comprehensive synthesis of human brain studies, reveals very few male-female difference beyond size by Lisa Elliott. But before that, there is Gina Ripon has already come out with a book called The Gendered Brain, the new neuroscience that shatters the myth of the female brain. Neurosexism, monomorphic brain now. Sex and gender difference in global brain size. Total brain volume is clearly present from birth and increases in magnitude during postnatal development. It's a normal phenomenon. Interhemispheric structures, neither the corpus callosum nor the anterior commissure is reliably larger in females. Cortical thickness, 
existing data do not demonstrate a reliable sex gender difference. Brain connectivity based on structural DTA measures, including the functional connectivity, fails to exhibit a reliable sex gender difference, especially when controlling for brain size. So we are not yet there. What about social cognition? This has come in personality and individual difference of journal. Whether it is published now, I don't know. No significant sex difference in affective and cognitive theory of mind in the recognition of emotional facial expression. But a different result was found for empathy with the woman. Basically, the affective empathy, not the cognitive empathy. Affective empathy is reported higher scores in females. Now the question is, is there a gay brain? Biological research is not helpful in distinguishing between biologics and environmental influence. And how one interacts with the environment in constructing social relationships and experiences which sexual orientation is created. This was stalled in 1997. We who are lesbians, that is uh, Linda Berg, are cast as an intermediate sex. We are mannish women or effeminate men. Sexuality is once again collapsed onto gender and the diversity of sexual and personal expression among our community ignored. Brain Structure, Sexual Orientation, 2018 article, it is a multimodal MRI, suggests that male homosexuality may be linked to several midline structures, like homosexuality in males displayed significantly thicker anterior cingulate, precuneus, anterior cingulate and precuneus. You have to think now of the default network also is the posterior cingulate, basically, not the anterior cingulate, but precuneus is there in, um, in the default network. Functional connections with the default mode network were significantly weaker in homosexual males than homosexual males and heterosexual, heterosexual males and heterosexual females meaning they will have more mind, mind wandering. Whereas there's a functional connectivity between thalamus and hypothalamus, especially important nodes for sexual behavior were stronger. Structural, functional, and even metabolic different neurophysiological and neurometabolic features in transgender individuals resemble those of their experienced gender, despite the majority resembling those from their natural sex. This is Archives of Sexual Behavior, 2021. TSS Rao is there. I think it is still not uh, come out. In homosexual individuals, the majority resemble those of their same sex heterosexual population rather than their opposite sex heterosexual population. Differences are too subtle to measure with the, our available tools. We have to still wait for further uh, refined tools. Structural differences, the recent article in 2021, it to be published uh, in the I mean, page, etc. will come later. Structural differences linked to sexual orientation, a group of 74 participants, 37 men, 21 homosexual, and 37 men, 19 homosexual, using voxel based morphometry. But here, significant effect of sexual orientation for the thalamus and precentral gyrus with the more gravity volume in heterosexual versus homosexual individuals. But more important, if the putamen is with more in homosexual putamen center cluster is driven by 
than heterosexual individuals. Puttaman cluster was driven by homosexual women, whereas heterosexual women had increased pre-central gyrus. However, heterosexual men exhibited more volume in thalamus than the homosexual men. Subtle differences are there, but we have to wait for the new techniques. Difference in the brain structure could be explained by the targeted effects of sex hormones on the thalamus, hypothalamus, and hippocampus. Sexual orientation has strong association with areas primarily linked to processing and integrating incoming sensory reward-related motor information. So this I have already told midline structures, especially in heterosexual. It is not the case that all men and all women differ from each other, nor is it the case that there are no outliers among, uh, among women. Furthermore, there are no differences between brain structure of most men and women. That is the final say. Now, however, women will never be as successful as men why? Because they have no wives to advise them. I am talking about a heterosexual thing. No wives to advise them. That is the reason. Men say that they have got uh, their better half to advise them. That is why they might be successful. But if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, then ask a woman. Forget Mars and Venus. Men and women are from the same planet after all. What resulted in psychiatrist's curiosity now? Psychiatrists got so confused. Anyway, Mr. A wanted to get married. Your orthodox astrological terms. By all means, marry. If you get a good wife, you will become happy. If you get a bad one, you will become a philosopher. Both way you are good, you will benefit. Who is his prospective wife? A gynecologist with part-time job as astrologer. Why? Mr. A will look after the upper story and she will look after the lower story. I, I mean, as far as science is concerned. Mr. H chanted this mantra every day. What was the mantra? The relationship between husband and wife is very psychological. One is psycho and the other is logical. Now, Dora, please don't try to figure out who is who. But you may have many questions. But if you understand everything, you must be misinformed. So whatever questions you ask, I know, maybe coming from information or misinformation, similarly, whatever you ask also really come from misinformation or right information. If you understand everything, you must be misinformed. I think I have to thank you very much. Thank you, Chairpersons, Madhavan, Spida Dash, Deshpande, Organizes, Alim, uh, Amar, and Tofan. Thank you very much. Thank, you, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohandas. That was really a very interesting presentation. So I believe the moderators are now going to uh, look out for the questions. Yes, madam. Madam, you can give your opening remarks and hand it over to us. Any comments, anything you no, want? It was extremely interesting. The only thing uh, that I'd like to uh, applaud him for is that uh, his last remark that uh, the men, the women cannot be as successful as men because they don't have wives. <laughs> so <laughs> behind every successful man is a woman. One must remember that. But then... Um, you know, Maggie Thatcher wouldn't be who she was without her husband. 
so i think uh, his last words that men and women are complementary ultimately this is only one spaceship that we are living in which is the earth and we have to make do with each other whether it's uh, uh, men or women or or the third gendered persons and we have to live happily with each other so i invite the moderators now to please uh, you know call out the questions and dr mohandas to kindly answer them alim alim i would like to start sure amrit go on sir sir you told that uh, you no know, men and women or husband and wife are complementary so there are a lot of questions about finding a right partner and i think that's a very important area in you know psychiatric practice many people come and ask us sir who is the best match so what should be the criteria one should consider when when somebody is thinking of you know settling with somebody be it of the same gender be it of the opposite gender so what what is the complementary things we should find in somebody how 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 should how, what what is the guru mantra <laughs> yeah answer is very simple answer is very simple sir everything is adjustment you adjust whatever is with you and you then you will become happy don't fantasize things you be happy with whatever you are having so you cannot select like that but in many of the love marriages people like the professionalism the beauty or uh, uh, many other things but in our culture especially my culture we go to the parents and uh, we have our astrological signs they say it's a good match and reasonably good family you be happy with whatever you are having and later you will learn to adjust adjust so no adjustment disorder but adjustment order or ordering adjustment thank you sir we see a lot of mental illness in the 40s and 50s because of a lot of adjustment people have done through in their you know maybe 20s 30s post marriage we see a lot of you know and i i i sound sexist but i see a lot of females actually coming up at the age of 40 45 50 who have adjusted with everything in their life and at suddenly at when everything seems to be right when everything is in place they they just you know decompensate and then it's it's a, it's a tough road 20 years <laughs> down the line they, they they keep on repeating the same things the past so is it all about adjustment or sometimes it is not about adjustment also sir yeah you are correct because variety is the spice of life but you cannot sure. really keep that one in your um, real married life when you have got children and other thing also be happy with the, what you are having and always admire your wife whatever uh, uh, good or bad things you have to come down she will also come down okay uh sir sir we are not able to see your video uh, video you cannot see because uh, okay. i am somewhere in mars you know <laughs> okay okay sir why should boys have all the fun yeah yeah you ask a female whether they have fun because okay. it is uh, uh, you ask them i think they will have more fun than males you think that uh, males have fun i don't okay. uh, i don't think so so i think we are mis- misinformed here yeah we are misinformed you are making fun of others but okay. they will be making fun of yours and uh, for fun of you people it is almost like um, uh, have you seen um, uh, dogs yeah uh, if one dog want to piss others follow emulate they will also start so there are many people who want to emulate other emulate others don't emulate you be yourself no problem okay 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 oh. uh, so there is a question from uh, dr sukumaran sir can we explain epidemiological preponderance of alcohol autism adhd in males depression in females uh, from the differences in the hippocampus amygdala and uh, uh, other such things that we talk about i think i have already told in the beginning i will not be covering about the disorders i am talking about the normal brains but as uh, my friend pk sumaran has asked there are explanation that will be another lecture by itself for example 
why children they usually have got activity disorders initially for example we talk about adhd sometimes conduct disorder but uh, by the age of puberty the limbic system really takes over the cortical system secondly the dopaminergic activity and norepinephrine activity which uh, we talk about activities they are if you see the pathway to some extent it's lateralized uh, to the right now later the limbic by puberty the limbic system takes over now there are explanations why depression is more common in females estrogen matters estrogen as a hormone influences multiple neurohormones and it will influence your the depression circuits and especially the amygdalization which i usually call it not only that one ptsd too so that will be another uh, talk by itself why uh, there there's a sex difference in alcoholism alcoholism he might be talking about india but other parts of the world i have uh, because last of for uh, sugumaran sake and for others everyone see see last um, wpa some months back uh, in a virtual conference my talk was why alcoholism uh, or drug dependence or alcoholism in in, in females are they different from males the biological significance that means the orientation of the circuits why they get it why what happens in females uh, that is a pre recorded it is already there in wpa channel but now i think you have to pay for that uh, but uh, i think uh, if alim siddiqui and amrit wants to have that my uh, slight uh, preparation confidentially i will send you not for circulation there are differences okay others okay. i will not discuss because uh, then i will waste all of my time to discuss the disorders the okay. personality okay. exercise sir 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 Uh, sir if i if i give you two post mortem brains one of I male one of i have already answered it you cannot yeah, you, you cannot so, you so cannot. what are the what are the in the... 90s 90s late 90s in the post mortem they have told that the anterior hypothalamus is smaller because of the inst that uh, gene but that is all a gone case now you cannot do it you cannot differentiate purely on a human post mortem brain you cannot diagnose whether it's a male or female uh, so sir is there any criteria suppose if i give you functional imaging then uh, can you differentiate by giving tasks whether the person is male and female i am blinding you to the uh, uh, person's gender yeah that is what uh, the current uh, the 2021 article which is a meta analysis which has told that you are not finding any major differences to differentiate between male and female brain and uh, please read that article 2021 in neuroscience bio behavior review uh, behavior reviews which is freely downloadable now that article and this is by the lisa it's a super article and you will get it and uh, there are uh, meta analysis of uh, imaging studies everything has been done in um, and everything is together but the problem is unless until we get a new tools in the connectomic era which i am not discussing here because that is another topic of mine connectomics the method of investigation and in optogenetics but there if you get a new tools we might be able to find out some specific nodes and specific hubs which are too early to say predict anything for the time being sorry no we do not have an answer so are the connections in the female more dense because we were in a discussion with someone so the person was telling uh, some 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 is there a difference in connectivity uh, uh, density of connections in the connectomes that is correct that was the previous information which i have already told that the connectivity 
with the white matters and the, uh, it is too much and it has got an inter-hemispheric connectivity and therefore related to multitasking, etc. In males, it is only an intracerebral connectivity. But things are all uh, not that clear now. They say in the connectomic area era, these type of differences are not seen now in 2021. We have to yet to be, uh, I mean, wait for the new findings. So you meant to say the current neurobiology doesn't support sexism? Absolutely. Uh, sexism, as far as the brain structure and function is concerned, not the sexual characteristics are concerned. Thank you, sex sir. Thank is you. different. The sex morphology, where whether it's a female, sexual characteristics are entirely different from the brain, which is uh, female brain and male brain. Sexual characteristics, it is basically estrogen matters mainly. Thank you, sir. Amrit. Sir, sir there's a very interesting question, and I think it's a very pertinent question. Sir, with online dating a norm and virtual sex being freely available, is traditional marriage taking a back seat? And or should traditional marriage take a back seat? You are a very good question. The current generation is called the Z generation. This is a new generation, is Z generation. And I have got a talk itself on Z generation. Now, this new generation wants to experiment everything. They want to be rich by yesterday, and they want to have more contact and interaction, and um, they will have more friends, including sexual interaction, and they will forget everything is taken for granted. That uh, there is a cultural change which is happening, whether it is good or bad, it is up to the person concerned and the culture concerned, the family concerned to decide. But I belong to the older generation where I don't want my children uh, to go that way. They can have marriages, love marriages, but uh, so many dating sort of thing. Personally, personally, I don't encourage. It is up another to the time. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, another interesting question. Sir, we try to understand, you know, the male brain, the female brain, the third gender brain. We also explain to a lot of, lot of these to our clients. But actually, is married life of a psychiatrist better than others? Uh, provided the psychiatrist doesn't have any personality disorder, doesn't have any major psychiatric disorders, and the other half, better half also doesn't have much problem, fine, it will be okay. However, however, the personality disorders, you cannot have a litmus test before marriage because mm -hmm. in marriage, whatever you do in our times, only the horoscope matters. Because many conditions, we don't do a blood group. Do you do a blood group before you get married? You don't do it. Do you do a personality inventory before you get married? No. So far, no. So very difficult to say it's a gamble. It's a gamble. So I cannot say that I am happy. I am a psychiatrist. I am happy. The other psychiatrist, I don't know why. If he has got a uh, other disorders, substance use disorder, or whether his personality is different from the other side, then uh, it matters so much. You cannot predict this one will do well and the other one will not do well. So, so in today's world, where where marriages are breaking like you know nine pins, is it worth the gamble? You take lottery tickets. You know, many people take lottery tickets. Have you taken lottery tickets? Have you yeah, taken? But, the, but, but if you look at a lottery ticket, the price of a ticket and the, you know, the price is is, is, is too big. So that is why and people, here it, it might be absolutely, no, absolutely opposite. correct. That is why they take multiple times lottery tickets. You know? So you can't take multiple partners, no, sir? Yeah, multiple partners, but then 
uh, certain things very difficult to answer it it is your luck okay <laughs> the god of luck will decide what is right for you thank you so much thank you so much sir alim i'll take leave yeah thank you uh, sir is there a publication bias uh, the question is there are many myths and mis- in misinformation about gender differences and bias so this gender difference or gender based studies are accepted faster uh, is it a publication bias for it is there any uh, comment on that sir absolutely right because publication bias is there uh, initial studies there is a publication bias later uh, the uh, feminism activists they uh, talked uh, the other way around now there was a chat in the box poem from my friend balagunath balakrishnan uh, hormones really play a role absolutely correct even sexual orientation not only the hormones but the genetics matters hormones matters also the culture matters the environment matters i mean i am answering not only your question but regunath's question also Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, But uh, Regudad, if he wants, he has to hear my talk on estrogen-brain connection. That is another talk of mine, which uh, uh, I don't know whether I will be able to uh, do it uh, soon. I do have my slide uh, thing, but my time really matters with me. Sure, sure. So there's a question that which personality profile? Uh, you said that the person should not have any major personality disorder. Which sort of personality profile in a usual or normal person is would have a more uh, stable marriage? Will have a better uh, combination permutation for marital stuff? Everyone has got a mix of personality traits. Only when the traits really deviate into one cluster we talk of cluster a cluster b cluster c etc etc so then it becomes a when it is a personality disorder is different from personality okay if it is a disorder the thing psychotypic it is like uh, uh, mood swings so many mood swings will be there and some are very good some are very bad Uh, experience are there passive aggressive and that is also disorder and emotionally unstable personality disorder especially we talk about borderline personality disorder very difficult to live with but still you have to adjust it so what is the right one it is a mix of all traits it is not a disorder if it really falls into disorder it's a big problem Okay, uh, sir. Uh, Meena Kapoor wanted to ask a question. Meena, uh, I'm Meena, just, uh, Meena ma'am. Yeah, yeah, please, sir. please unmute yourself, ma'am. Doctor. Yeah, ma'am. Doctor Mohanda asked. Yes, yes. After a long time to see you. <laughs> yes, yes. There may not be brain differences. It may be just hormonal causing the difference. in sex as you have said but recently there have been so many webinars and conferences on sexual disorders but i find that all the people in the panel are men is it that they think that they can sort out all the problems themselves or are they only most confused about it you are absolutely correct in indian psychiatric society how, how what is the percentage of female psychiatrists what is the total female psychiatrist for the total psychiatrist population in india uh, when you see that many of the child psychiatrists many of them are uh, uh, i mean uh, you are female psychiatrists prefer uh, usually the child psychiatric thing they have got enough patients and time um, maybe because of that otherwise the allocation for the gender bias in not only the organization also in the webinars may be absolutely clear i think the future webinar people have to try to give 
more representation to them, provided they are in the past. Now, the problem is, depending upon the topic, some people may be expert in some field. You will be seeing my webinar CD sooner than later, next Friday, a neuroscience, especially diagnostic skills. I have given enough, uh, enough uh, leverage to enough of representation uh, to the female neurologists and psychiatrists. But you should know what is the percentage of psychiatrists the ratio male and female. Similarly, the representation in IPS. I do have the data. I do have the data. I don't want to project it. I don't want to really trouble anyone. I do have the data. No. And so no, but, I think that you have to encourage uh, those people who are interested. You have to give good representation, if not equal representation, if possible, if they are good at it, more representation. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. but see what I'm talking specifically about are the webinars on sexual disorders, not just general. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will not answer. You have to ask those organizers. I don't yes. want to be an outsider. Yes. So if I can add a brief point here, uh, when you when you are going to take exams, you will now start finding the female residents are uh, more in number than male most often. So the new entrants who are joining psychiatry, it is my observation. I may be. Uh, no, no, that is good. That is good. I think Alim, first of all, you do total psychiatrist in India. How many males, females? How many residents are there? Male, female. What is the representation in state societies? And even Indian psychiatrists. So that will be a good paper by itself. Okay, sure, thank sure. You. I think I think OP is there. Yeah, merely, Smita, ma Yeah, merely talking about you know your observation is not enough, as Dr. Das Mohandas says. You have to collect the data over a period of time and see uh, what are the trends, and then you may perhaps get a shock. Yeah, the trend will be better, uh, Smita. That will be good. That is what he has observed. Don't worry. She Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, uh, I think uh, O.P. Singh sir is there. Uh, O.P. Singh sir, are you there? I do not want to comment anything. I am just enjoying. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Dr. Faisal has well, raised the hand. That, uh, I always say that women are more powerful. Previously, brute force was required. Now with computer, uh, their brains are more agile. And uh, obviously, they, are, uh, they have more skills than men. Uh, so, obviously, uh, the brute force is uh, now you have to do not have to lift a tree and other things you have to uh, just to put a switch uh, so things are changing and brains will be changing also uh, with the, what the job they uh, they are required to do OP, uh, so is a nice yeah. no, not going into OP, that op 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 is in a male computer or female computer <laughs> no no and i am so glad that you brought epigenetics as well as the social uh, you know aspects of uh, female upbringing into this uh, discussion because as social upbringing changes as uh, the epigenetic factors change as our environment change, changes with all the pollution and non pollution whatever our interference with the, with the environment may be i am sure that our brains will also become a different uh, organ entity. Okay, sure, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, there is a uh, uh, sir. There is a question in the chat box. In some left-wing countries, people decide the gender to which they want to be categorized. Like a male weightlifter competes with female opponents and declares himself a female. My question is, how far is it correct? I mean, is gender a natural and biological matter or socially or personally determined matter? It is both. Which I have already No, no, answered. but what's a left wing country? What is called a left wing country? You see, to name those countries. Uh, Smitha, that is basically when they're in America, there was a pro and the Western countries. We started to eat it. It is up to the culture, it is up to the individual whether they want to be a homosexual, whether they want to be a heterosexual, or they want to be multisexual. It is up to that country, up to the individual. We cannot generalize things. I am only talking about the brains here. 
I don't want to politicize the issue. Okay. Sure, sir, sure. Uh, I think uh, uh, Isaac, sir, was there. No, uh, Dr. Pfizer has raised uh, Pfizer from Pitu. Uh, sir, I'm not Pfizer. able to see his hand. Dr. Pfizer, if you can raise your hand on the Zoom app, I'll, I'll invite you. Uh, Dr. Mohan, Isaac, sir, is there. Sir, if you want to comment. Yes. Uh, yes, certainly. Yes. Yeah, Mohan, good evening. Good evening. Hi, good evening. It was great listening to you. Uh, uh, good evening. I, of course, I don't want to comment on any of the, uh, you know, brain wiring that uh, uh, Mohan Das talked about because he's a master in that and I cannot make any comment. I just want to make one or two comments because the title was very catchy. In fact, uh, two reasons why I logged on today. One, of course, is the speaker today is Mohandas, my good dear friend. I have always loved listening to him. But second, maybe more important, was the title. Men are from Mars and women are from uh, Venus. I knew that he was going to talk about the brain and the wiring, etc., etc. But he did spend a lot of time initially talking about the background of the book. And that is what I wanted to just add on. He did mention about John Gray and uh, how the book came in the 90s. It's about 30 years. In fact, the book uh, made him immensely rich because it sold more than 15 million in the United States alone. And for about, uh, you know, when you look at the books which have stayed the longest in the New York Times bestseller list, and that runs into three, four years. This book, uh, according to CNN, stayed in the New York Times bestseller list in the 1990s for about 230 weeks, 235 weeks or so. Uh, one of the books uh, which uh, holds this record, not only New York Times, but uh, all over the world is uh, uh, The Da Vinci Code. Then there are other books, the Harry Potter series, they are all in this list. So the point I want to make is that, ma see, this man is uh, not a doctor. He's not a neurologist. He's not a psychiatrist. He's not even a fully trained psychologist. He, his psychology degree is uh, from a correspondence course. He has got a PhD, as Mohan has clarified. He has got a PhD in meditation. And he became the secretary of his guru. But uh, the point I wanted to make is that marriage problems are so very common. I think Alim or uh, uh, Amit said that the marriage is so much of a... Uh, I mean, every marriage, at least in the West, more than 50% of the marriage end in separation. So there, many young people have now believed that it is much better to be, you know, the, the concept of living together. And that has even become a legal kind of a thing. I mean, if uh, out of out of wedlock, living together, the child is born, what are the rights? In the Western world, they are talking about all that. I am not, uh, uh, I am fairly sure that even in India, it's already beginning to occur. I uh, uh, respect what uh, Mohanda said about, uh, you know, the next generation, including his children dating and all that. But things are not in our control. At least I live in Bangalore city and I know how things are. My friends, children and other. So it's a ch fast changing world. So, but the marriage still continues to be a problem. And even if you don't get married, then there is relationship between a man and women. These kinds of problems come. And uh, the fact that John Gary not only became a uh, best-selling author, but for the next 15, 20 years, and I think even now he is giving webinars and he is considered like a pop marriage counselor and he still goes by whatever he wrote in this book. The essential point that he was making was that psychologically men and women are different, but we have learned from a scientist now. What is it? What is the basis? The neuroscientific basis. So I just want to end by saying that uh, I enjoyed Dr. Mohandas' talk on a topic which is very interesting uh, and, of course, very scholarly. And uh, we are all the more wiser about, uh, you know, the wiring of the male brain and the female brain. Thank you very much, uh, Mohan. Uh, Mohan, Mohan, one more yeah. comment from me. Uh, I, I have told the initially, I told the organizers, even the initial slides, I will not go into the molecular biology and... Uh, the details, the network connectivity, etc., because it might be boring for many people. So I want to keep a low key. That is the reason. 
that is perfectly fine i'm i'm yeah. not <laughs> i mean i i was only saying i enjoyed your talk and of course i agree i yeah. I, i didn't want to go into details because sure. that it will be boring i sure. thought of even thursday musings i yeah. thought why don't we take it in a relaxed way that is it right. okay thank you that's absolutely right uh, i think uh, dr gautam saha sir is there and dr shashi ram ma'am uh, Uh, Shashi Ram, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am, your comments. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, Shashi. So it was really interesting listening to you. It's always a pleasure, and it was a great learning experience uh, to hear and and such an interesting topic. Men is uh, from Mars and women from Venus because we've been reading that book for a very long time. So it was really interesting, and we learned lots of new things. Thank you, sir. thank you ma'am uh, so sir uh, mohanda says i i think then ultimately we reach to conclusion that both are from earth yes definitely we are in this world and now i have come down to earth but i don't want to show my photo though no, <laughs> okay. i was in mars okay <laughs> okay okay my computer is not accepting me yeah my photo this computer this okay. is a new computer that's a problem Okay, okay, sir. I think Vina Ma'am wants to make another comment. Vina Ma'am, just a comment that, like everybody says, it is we saw we see marriage problems very, very often, especially the younger couples, and these are really difficult to handle. So I think this comment that men are from Mars and women women from Venus is taken up very well, you know, by both partners, and somehow, although we may not believe it. people when they hear it you know they kind of feel okay reconciled and try to work in a way that okay we are different but that's okay i mean this is just a practical experience that i have that people still somehow are affected by that and feel you know somewhat uh they feel that's true which may not be it's just a comment hey thank you ma'am thank you ma'am Uh, sir one more uh, uh, question that has come in the uh, personal chat box so are humans uh, monogamous or polygamous by neurobiology uh, you can be not only polygamous multigamous also but uh, we live in a world we were mohan isaac myself we were living in a world of monogamous that range but current generation we don't know the future generation may get a uh, what do you call a paradigmatic shift i don't know i cannot answer sure sir uh, any any if anyone one uh, anyone else has a question i think sir we have covered all the questions if there is any question left please post in the chat box uh, otherwise we can start winding up now so uh, okay so there is a question that uh, should you would you suggest adopting a different way of approach to psychotherapy for males and females example more technical for males and more affective based for females uh, i don't know i cannot answer i think veena kapoor would have asked this question i think uh, uh, she can add to it there will be spe specialization for female psychotherapists for female problems or uh, male psych psychotherapists for male problems i don't know uh, i don't uh, usually uh, keep that much time for psychotherapy or something i usually send to my psychologist i don't have much time i mean she is an expert in psychotherapy i think uh, uh, she can suggest okay sir uh, if uh, if we not going to just have this comment that uh, i don't think it's different but in most marriages the women come you know because they are the ones who are hurting more and it's very difficult to get the husbands in therapy and when they do even then you know the way our society is is kind of a patriotic i mean once again i'm 
going away from the subject. So that plays a big part in therapy. You know, how one can be empathic, more empathic to the male to sort of keep him in therapy. I think, uh, um, Mohan sir, Dr. Yes. Mohan Isaac, sir, please. I just want to make a comment uh, in response to the question, uh, you know, about monogamous and the polygamous. Uh, I think what is uh, popular is not polygamy, but uh, what has been very popularly called the serial monogamy. That means at one point, in, you may have a series of partners over a period of time. But uh, uh, since uh, we started with a book titled Men Are From Mars and uh, Women Are From Venus, there is another uh, very interesting book called by Kay Taylor called Serious Monogamy. And that is what the most men in the Western world currently practice. They are not really polygamous, but as, you know, I mean, at a point in time, it's a serial monogamy. I mean, there is a series of succession of partners. So this is what is now popular, because being polygamous is not uh, acceptable in a very civilized world. But see, see, serial monogamy is accepted. I just wanted to make this comment in response to the question. That yeah, Mohan, in a legal parlor, they talk about monogamy and bigamy. When yes. there is an argument, they say, this uh, has got a bigamy. Because of that, we want to have a uh, divorce, you know, that uh, this is a, I mean, whatever you are told is verified. Uh, monogamy, one after monogamy, how many we don't know. The number matters. That's right. Sure, sir. Thank you. Uh, I think we will hear persons for their uh, concluding remarks and then to, to finally to yeah. Tofan Pati, sir. Maybe Dr. Madhavan can summarize a bit because uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, he didn't really uh, get a chance to say anything much. <clears throat> yes, Dr. Madhavan. Dr. Madhavan, your views. Uh, Dr. Smita, I think that explains uh, the difference between the female brain and the male brain. The two chairpersons that are here today, I can put it not on a subtle note. <laughs> I hope you're taking the right sense. Uh, yeah. it's, been a <laughs> it's been a privilege to listen to my very bosom friend, uh, Dr. Mohan, and uh, the organizers, uh, all of them, including Tufan Pati Bosch and uh, my alumni friend, Aleem and uh, Amrit and all of them. And it's been wonderful to be with uh, Mohan Isaac and a whole lot of friends. Before I wind up, I, I thought I saw the... Uh, Male female difference, Ustad uh, Dr. T.S.S. Rao around here. Uh, has he signed out or would he want to make? Uh... Uh, sir, I think he has he, he had a flight, so he was he had left five, 10 minutes back. I think, oh, I, th I, I think we lost him. It, it would have been nice. Um, Mona just told me about uh, what he was going to speak, and I thought it was a wonderful idea. It's, it's one of the best lectures of Mohan that I've seen. Um, I don't know whether it's more spicy because I couldn't see him or I, I but I think you should you should come down to the earth more often more uh, so that we, we have a more funny side of your picture coming up. Um, I, I would congratulate the Odisha group for uh, like uh, TSS said more than half a century and uh, keep going and all the very best. And thank you, all my friends and good listeners and the organizers. Take care. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, thank you, you organizers. Thank you, organizers. Ma'am, any concluding remarks from your side? Yeah, just wanted to thank you all. Okay. And this was a very interesting uh, discussion indeed. Although sometimes bordering on, uh, you know, absolutely non psychiatric or perhaps not even. Not even uh, non a social but uh, it was interesting and i'm glad that uh, he could un you know uncover some of the um, beliefs and prejudices that our larger society uh, holds 
which are also unfortunately reflected in our own group. So as teachers, we need to look at these prejudices, these stigmas and these uh, attitudes and change them in a more enlightened form so that you know there is more equity and equality in our society. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Tofan, sir, over to you and uh, for final comments and thanks. Amrit, you are here? Sir, Amrit had to leave because his... No, uh, I, I know that whether he's yeah. persisting or he has gone. I don't uh, know. Yes, yeah. So I shall do his uh, I would his statement job also. Right. <clears throat> so it is very nice to see so many old friends and old contacts. This is the first grade I got from this webinar because this is the 53rd or 53rd century. And I got to see, contact, talk to Madhavan after a long, long, long gap. I, and I talked and saw now, seeing now Dr. Smita Despande. So nice. So we'll meet next time, many time in Delhi, surely. And this also introduced me to the book by Gary. After listening to the title of Mohan, I wanted to go through the book. Is my kya hai? Usko title banana diya usme. Yeah, it is freely downloadable, man. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it after getting your title, and your talk is very nice, starting from the in principal differences between male and female, possible. Genetic and neurological differences, which you speak in another tech you have told. And we came down also to the amalgamated topics of social aspects, which are also quite important. It is quite important when you talk of these issues, this comes into play. And people long to ask what is this, whether it is neurological determinants, or whether you whether this neurological determinants is changing over time so that from this pattern of life people are preferring. Staying, staying together, people are preferring being philosophy. So these are the things that come to mind. But it's true that we had a very nice mixture of discussion, free as of always we have been just amusing. One second, eh? and Modi, you want to tell something? You want me to tell something? It is excellent. You surfaced. You surfaced. Like it is excellent talk, and I really enjoyed it. I don't have anything to add. The only thing is that uh, most likely the uh, environmental factors may tend to have a much more effect on uh, the normal brain rather than looking at a structural change. That's what I, uh, I think so. Uh, it was an excellent talk and it was very good. And uh, I'm sure I was in another call now. So it's uh, thanks for uh, organizing this and all the best for all of this. I could also see Madhavan after a long time. Murali, Murali, how are you, man? I am doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything is said. So far, no complications of the post-COVID situation, nothing. So, that's good. Uh, Tufan, sir, Dr. Ramayan, sir, is also there. Uh, if you'd like to, uh, sir, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Dr. Dr. Raman, Red, please. Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Tufan. And uh, this is the first time I'm uh, hearing this uh, particular session. Uh, anyway, it was nice and uh, good to see so many people who I have seen uh, missing for a long time. Thank you. So I'll personally request Ranjan. Ranjan, you are here listening to me. Ranjan? No, he's okay. Oh. So let us. So it has been a nice experience. I sincerely thank uh, my dear friend, esteemed speaker, <laughs> or faculty, or chairpersons, and all the light participants were. Uh, participated in the discussion. And I also send Ali Amrit, our vibrant moderators, and another vibrant team behind Sajiyar, Rucha, and Sarva, and last but not the least, the torrent 
who has been with us persistently, affectionately, and dearly to complete this program. And I record this gratitude on behalf of Indian Psychiatric Society, Old State Branch, who has given us free hand to organize this in the way we did. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful session. I'm Ranjan here, sir. It's an are excellent are session. Are yes. Ranjan here? Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Yeah. Uh, you did not answer. I, I wanted to ask you about yes, sir. the... What is the spiritual coordinates you did use, sir? Because we meet in the awakening forum almost three to four times a week, a month. Sir, can, can you repeat once more? In between, one call was there. I just I missed the communication. Spiritual correlates of male, female. Spiritual correlates. It's a very difficult to answer in a simplistic manner, sir. It's an it's a area of research and there had been uh, many, many theories and proponents of there, sir. Sir, uh, ultimately, it's a concept of the Ardha Narishwar. So we are none, none is uh, unique. So all has been blended and some aspects are there in terms of the neurobiological construct and other neurochemical aspects. And we know all that the women are more uh, support, uh, are, are has, uh, perhaps they, have, they, have, they are more have emotions and other related things and other neurobiological areas are being involved. So that's a long session to discuss here. Yeah. The spiritual connectivity is there. So we are going through this session in the Awakening with Scripture group. Yes, yes, I am a member of that group also now. That is a quote to just know the tagline. And thank you, Ranjan. And with this, we close this meeting. This is thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you all. Ali. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you so much, yeah. sir. It was wonderful, wonderful. Well, you, you, you just... Wonders, it is fantastic. The change of yes was you awesome. To come we, again. Started, we started on a different frame, then landed somewhere else, and it was just uh, mind blowing. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. You know, that thank is you, the way the presentation you. style has to be different. You know? yeah. Yes, that is it. And special thanks to Madhavan sir, Smita ma'am. Thank you so much to the chairpersons. Pleasure, and thank you for inviting me. Okay. And thank you Goodbye. all the uh, okay. Good night. Uh, if Sufan Fatih sir uh, orders, then we can uh, close the meeting. Yes, yes, we so can we close. Okay, thank you very much all. Say, seeing so many friends again is a great pleasure. So, Pavan? Yes, sir. I'll close the meeting from my side. Okay. Okay. Good night, sir. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Thank you.